Hey folks, it's Joe here. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about my saws, what kind of saws I'm using, and specifics about them. So I thought I'd do a video. I've got five saws here. We'll go through them and I'll let you know my thoughts on each of them. Before I get into them, I need to assemble this one. So this is my Adventure Swarm Buck saw. It comes just like this, three pieces. And to put it together, it's super easy. The saw blade is already connected inside there. You just gotta unfold it and put your cross piece on. They put the Adventure Sworn logo on, so you'll never be able to um, mix it up and put it on upside down. You shouldn't be able to do that anyway, but foolproof, Joe, Joe proof. So then you just slide your toggle on, and you gotta start twisting her. And you gotta give her hell, you gotta twist this thing until you don't think it can twist anymore. All right, we're getting there. You know that it's done when, if you feel like you let this go, it's gonna sling back, back super hard. Uh, just maybe do it once or twice more. Yeah, that's that's done right there. And then tuck it back in. And the toggle just kind of rides and holds it in place. We'll start with the folding saws. I'm sure you all have seen all three of these before. So my first one was a Baco Laplander. Good saw, pretty indestructible saw. It served me well for many years. This is actually probably my third one. I got a little orange uh, lanyard on there because it's a green handle. My second one, I've had this for, I don't know, better part of three years probably, two years, three years, is a Silky Pocket Boy. And uh, she's seen some better days for sure. She's a little warped and bent. We'll go over that in a minute. And I have a green lanyard on there just to get it out of my pack. The handle's red, so I'm not too worried about it. And then the newest one is a Silky Gone Boy. This thing is a beast. It's quite a bit bigger than the, than the Silky Pocket Boy. And I have an orange lanyard again because it's a black handle. So this is a homemade buck saw. You're gonna have to use your imagination a little bit for it. I made this uh, probably three, two or three years ago for a uh, lesson over on Bushcraft USA. And I just kept it because I think it was the best one I've done so far. So basically, this is the same setup as this here, right? So this is your cross piece, your toggle. This would be your toggle and it would have a uh, paracord on it. So I made two notches here for the paracord to loop around. This goes in the paracord and twists in and locks against the, the middle brace, just like this here. And then the blade at the bottom, I put slits in because I was using a trailblazer buck saw and it has the, the, the black pegs at the end. So I just slid the, the blade in here and pulled it and it stuck. But if you don't have that kind, you can actually put uh, key rings on it and just put, put it over top of it or put a piece of stick uh, in the hole up for the for the blade and that'll stop it from pulling out too. So that's a, that's a good option if you don't want to buy one, if you want to make it yourself or just a, have a little fun making one. Let's take a look at the Baco Laplander first. Laplander is a good saw. It was my first saw. It's probably the saw that everybody gets right off the hop. There is, it is a good saw, but there's a couple things I don't like about it. The thickness of the blade has positive and negative effects on it. The positive is it's it's pretty durable, man. I can bend it, but I've never really bent it too bad while I was sawing. But the thickness of the blade makes it bind a little bit more in the wood. It doesn't slide through as easy. Whereas something like the Silky, it's got a lot thinner blade, but I've bent the crap out of the blade as you can see and it's going to break any time now. So there is there is benefits to the thicker to the thicker saw. Uh, good saw, it, it couldn't really go wrong with it. Next up is the Silky Pocket Boy. It's a good saw. It's the first Silky I got and uh, I, it's the one that sold me on them. So this is the Pocket Boy 170 with medium teeth. You can see it has no, no lock on it, just kind of slides open and it opens relatively easily so it's kind of sketchy. But it's been bent so much that it actually fits in the, in the handle uh, without coming out because it's been bent. Not, not the greatest thing, but whatever. Uh, the handle's grippy, real grippy. Uh, to the fact where if it was in the heat for a long time, it'd be one of those things where it kind of got sticky. Um, the blade locks there so it doesn't fall down, and then it locks back one more so you can get a different angle on it if you need. But that's synonymous with my other Silky as well. Good saw, again, a little flimsy, a little on the flimsy side. My pride and joy, the old Gone Boy. So this is my newest saw I got. This is the Silky Gone Boy. So one and a half the times the size of the Pocket Boy. Let's see, for a comparison. So you can see quite a difference on it. There's handle to handle. And it's thicker. The blade is a touch thicker. And I got the large teeth on this one as opposed to the medium one on this one. This is a very good saw. Um, 
I haven't bound it yet too much and it hasn't bent because it's a little bit thicker and because I know how to use the silkies now. Again, grippy uh, coating. This one's black, black rubber. Why I got the orange lanyard on it, like I was saying. Uh, this is the Gomboy 240 with large teeth. So they're all made in Japan. Good, uh, again, good saw. I, I would take this as opposed to a lot of other saws these days. So all of these are good saws. You could buy any one of these saws and be set. Um, they all have different applications though, right? I'm not going to take my Adventure Swarm Buck saw on, on a backpacking trip. I'm not going to take my Laplander on a trip where I want to build a shelter, you know what I mean? A substantial sh shelter anyway. Um, I wouldn't, from personal experience, from, from, from using saws for a while and knowing what I like and having different ones and stuff, I'm not again going to buy a, ba a Baco Laplander. It just doesn't fit the bill for me anymore. It doesn't, for its... For what it is, it doesn't cut as good as a Silky. Bottom line. In my experience. Silky Pocket Boy, I won't buy again. It's just too small for what it is. The weight difference between the Pocket Boy and the Gone Boy is insignificant, and the, the cutting power of the, of the Gone Boy just blows the Silky Pocket Boy out of the water. So, I think I'm set on folding saws now, right? When this, when this Silky Gone Boy goes, I'm gonna get another one. And the thing about Silkies too is like, you might as well just buy a whole new saw because the replacement blade is like five dollars less than the whole saw so i'm sure i'm exaggerating a little bit but really it, it, probably just time to buy a new saw when this one goes but this will last me a while like i said this silky saw this gone boy or, uh, pocket boy has lasted me for two or three years the same blade so enough talking i'm gonna go around and find a piece of red oak so i can do a cut test on with these four saws First up, I'm going to use the uh, Baco Laplander. So it works, obviously, and right away, just uh, from not using this saw for a while, I can feel how short it is, how short I have to make my cuts because the, the blade length is just not there. Next up, let's use the Silky uh, Pocket Boy. Uh, it seems like the uh, Laplander cut better than the Pocket Boy. It might be because the Pocket Boy is so old, the teeth are worn out, but definitely seemed like the Laplander cut better than that po than the Silky Pocket Boy. All right, the old Gone Boy. See how she goes. I'm doing all these one-handed as well. More of a, a, pu a pull cut on this one. Cuts on the pull. Nice and easy. So that one's the best so far, obviously, and I'm sure the buck saw is gonna do it quicker, but the point of this is they all work, right? It's not like one doesn't cut. Oh, slipped. So obviously the buck saw killed it all just for ease of, of, of cutting because the blade length is so long. That's one of the reasons anyway. And of course there's lots of other options, right? You can get a Fisker's folding saw, you can get a, a Coglins, you can, uh, North 49 I'm sure makes them. All these little like Walmart-y kind of things, but the thing with those are, they will break on you. Um, I had a Fisker's or a Gerber, they're the same kind that slide up and you have that knob to turn it on, to crank it on. The knob failed on one, the blade broke on the other. If you're going to get a folding saw or a saw for bushcraft for outdoors use, I, I would recommend to get, at the very least, get a Laplander. Um, they're going to last you for a very long time. They're sturdy. They do the job, as you've seen. Um, that's what I recommend to start with is a Laplander, a Baco Laplander. Um, Silkies, again, Silky would be my choice, um, but some people don't want to drop that money. I think they're, I'm not even 100% sure that that Gone Boy's got to be at least 50 bucks. Um, and then just right around there for the for the pocket boy, but lots of saws work. Well, folks, I hope you found this useful. Hope you got something out of it. There's been a lot of questions lately about my saws and my gear, so I'm trying to answer it. 
if, you, if I didn't answer it in this video, just let me know and I'll do my best to answer you in the comments or make a video about that. So if you appreciate what I'm doing, if you like what I'm doing, I would appreciate it if you like, comment, subscribe, and share. Uh, trying to make a run of this, so it, it helps. Thanks, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Something that I do like about the buck saw, though, that the, the folding saws don't give you the option of doing is when you have a piece of wood that's this small, maybe even half the size this or quarter size, and you want to cut it up into, into half, and it's awkward because when things are small like this, you can't really hold them together pry them, or, or prop them up on something. So if you take your buck saw, you actually just put your foot on, and you can do this with any buck saw. This one works really well for it because it's got a big, big part on it. Put your foot on there. Put your other foot on behind it. You can do a couple different ways. You can cross your feet like this, whatever. But then you can just move the wood. You gotta do it slow at first until you get a groove and then. Super easy to cut wood that way. And it's, it's a good way to do um, bigger pieces, like rounder pieces because you're getting a lot of torque sawing that way as opposed to moving one arm. Anyways, good little Good little tip.